Hey guys, this is Crap Hunter, and welcome back to War Thunder! And welcome to patch 1.39! Huzzah! Yes, um, today, a couple of days after its release, um, admittedly, but considering that this patch came out on exactly the same day as the World of Tanks patch 1.39 came out, I kind of prioritized World of Tanks a bit over this. Um, but still, we're going to have a first impressions of it regardless. Um, so yes, patch 1.39, um, totally new patch, kind of surprised me with its release actually. Um, I had seen that there was a development server um, up, and I did try and have a go and downloading it, but unfortunately by the time I downloaded it, the server was closed. Well, the dev server at least was closed. So then a couple of days later, a mate of mine said, oh, by the way, Crap Hunter, there's a um, new patch out for War Thunder on exactly the same day as World of Tanks. I was like, ah, shit. Okay, we're going to have to record this after the patch 9.0. But anyway, I'm rambling a bit too much. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, basically, hello, I'm Crap Hunter. I do videos for Wealth of Tanks, War Thunder, and um, Total War Games. Um, basically, what I do in this video is I, f I list all the most oblivious things that you will see in the, a new patch on its supposed release day, and I give my first impressions of them. So, um... Patch 1.39, certainly an interesting patch. Um, they've uh, War Ga Gaijin have added a very, have added a very interesting array of things to it, which some of which I really like, and some of which I'm kind of a bit like, meh, you know, it's it's all right. I it's, I don't really think too much about it, but you know, question of the video, what do you think about it? Do you feel that the changes that will be shown and have been shown um, are a good thing, or do you feel that they've kind of ruined the game for you a bit? Anyway, um, yeah, so feel free to put that in the comment section down below. Anyway, um, enough of me rambling, let's get on with the first impressions. So, what's the first new thing that we have in patch 1.39? Well, the first new thing is that this patch was quite a big one. So, the good news is that means lots of stuff, right? And you would be correct, because all of the nations have now received a butt-ton of new planes. Um, well, a butt-ton of new planes spread across all the nations, which have actually done pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm quite impressed with what they've done. Most of them, unfortunately, are high-tier planes, so the likelihood of us seeing them will be quite different distance, um, but you never know. Um, I might be able to get up to them at some point. But anyway, um, let's focus on the thing. So what we'll do is we'll go from America to Japan. Left to right makes it easy. So uh, so the first plane, which we'll go from tiering wise, is this plane. The FU-41 FU F4U-1A US Marine Corps. Um, so as you can see, it is um pretty much the same as the Corsair as your first one. I'm afraid I have very little knowledge on this aircraft. Um, and to be honest with you, my, my aircraft knowledge versus my tank knowledge slash weapons knowledge isn't so good uh, with these. So, And it's even worse with, jet, with early versions of jets. So I do apologize if I can't provide too much of a historical um, archive for this thing. But what I can tell you is that this is the um, Corsair during which served in the Pacific Theater during the Second World War. Um, this thing was like the replacement for the Hellcat and it was known to be quite maneuverable or at least a lot more maneuverable than the Hellcat which really presented it as a big threat to the Japanese Zero. Though the Japanese Zero could still outmaneuver it, this thing was much better than the Hellcat. Um, it was also known. It, it was also famous for its interesting wing design, which I believe helped its maneuverability. And also, it's known for being able to fold up like the Hellcat and to be able to store it on an aircraft carrier. So, in a sense, this is your American. This is your perfect American um, fighter. And obviously, this is basically just a U.S. Marine Corps version of it, of which I think the wingspan is slightly smaller, if I'm not mistaken, than this one. Let me just put this through to customization. Uh, yeah, I I think we're about the same, or it's roughly the same. Or it could be that I'm just completely blind. So yeah, there's a new American naval fighter for you if you really love your Corsairs. There's another one as well, and another one as well. So those are the pretty nice aircraft for you. The next aircraft, which is at down at Tier 4, is probably one of the strangest aircraft I have ever seen. The F-82E. Yes, those that is two Mustangs stuck together with six machine gear there. I really, really don't understand the point of this aircraft. I really don't. Um, 
Yes, it might be more manoeuvrable. Yes, it might, you know, serve an interesting purpose. But I really don't understand the logistical side of things. This is probably where I, my historical knowledge, if I had more of a historical knowledge, I could probably explain it to you, but I really don't. Um, because for all intents and purposes, if you are curious, this thing here, in, at least in my eye, is no different to this vehicle here. And in fact, this vehicle is better, to a degree, than the other one. Why? Yes, four cannon, as a four machine gun, but one cannon. I just... This makes a lot more sense, in my eye, than this. But, you know, it's a tier four American aircraft, which I'm, shitty sh I'm pretty sure you'll have fun with regardless. Machine guns in the middle, um, two pilots will craft it, and I'm sure in combat someone will say that this thing's amazing but in my eye I think it's a bit of a waste of time and I'm kind of wondering why they put it in there because you could have something a little bit more productive and to be honest with you that's I thought that was a myth at first I really didn't think that that was that could exist but anyway so that's that American aircraft the next American aircraft is your first jet which is the P-80A um, nothing as I said historically no knowledge of this thing all I can say is that it comes free with a flashlight um, and it has a number of fancy pants uh, flag symbols and numbers and also some marking of a squadron over there yes this will be the first jet and this will be the first jet aircraft that you will encounter um, upon going up this line um, so yeah not too bad it's got six um, 50 cal machine guns so that's cool and it looks okay. I mean, I'm personally not a big... I'm, you know, it's alright. I'm not a big fan of these kind of aircraft, but, you know, it works. Um, followed which, you'll have the F-80C Shooting Star, which was which was before that one. Um, then you get this aircraft, the F-84B, which looks a hell of a lot better. Um, doesn't come with a flashlight on... Oh, no, it has it on the gear, but that's about it, really. Um, this one, I actually quite like the look of. This one's all... That actually seems pretty cool. Um, two... I'm assuming two fuel tanks with flashlights at the front. Um, I th oh no, those would probably be the blinkers, but whatever. Um, so, yeah. Um, pretty interesting design. Uh, big R's jet at the back. And it, once again, has six 50 cal machine guns in the nose. So, um, certainly an armed thing. Not cannoned, though. That's the only downside. It's not too many cannons on it. Um, but yeah, I like this aircraft. I don't know why. I have a thing for aircraft with these kind of things at the side. Either because it looks sci-fi-ish, or also because it looks like an X-Wing with its wings folded. Which I do love. I'm my favourite Star Wars aircraft of, of all time. But anyway, so yeah, there's your American aircraft for you. And it's not too bad. Um, as I said, fair amount of new jets and new um, things, which is pretty pretty cool for the Americans, um, so if you are wanting to di diversify your American jet list, you can now, which is pretty nice. Moving on to Deutschland, uh, Deutschland gets a nice array of aircraft as well, first of which is this thing, the Fokker Wolf 190A1. Finally, the Tier 2 Germany can get itself a Fokker Wolf, um, and she does look nice, I will not deny. Um, this, as much as far as I know, this aircraft was quite famous because it was very effective at shooting down B-17s, at least to my historical knowledge. Um, and previously, if you wanted to get a Fokker Wolf 190, you had to go all the way up to Tier 3. Downside, though, is that if you were currently grinding up um, towards getting it an A5 like I was, um, now what you've got to do is stop researching there and instead buy this plane before you can continue to buy this plane. But that's not too bad because I do like having a Fokker Wolf in my arsenal, and it also diversifies my fighter list. Um, the second new aircraft, which is pretty cool, where is it? It is here. The D Dornier uh, 217N2. And this is one of the most, this is another bizarre aircraft, and I will show you why. There you go. So first of all, at the front, it looks completely normal. Uh, four 20mm can on it at the front, plus four um, 7.92 machine guns at the front as well. You've got your, I believe, what is known as a night fighter, which has radar at the front, I believe. Um, it's also got some nice fancy pants camo. But what makes this aircraft different from all the other Dornier 217s is this. See that there? We'll zoom in on it just to give a better visual. There we go. See those four weird-looking exhaust ports? Well, they're not exhaust ports. 
they are cannon barrels. <laughs> yes, you will be able to shoot vertically at your opponent. How this will work, I don't, I, you ask? I have no clue. I just want to get one now, just to see how it works. But yeah, so apparently now, what you can do is if you're in a game and there's a rather annoying bomber up on the top and you can't reach him, just simply fly underneath him, pull the middle finger, and pull the trigger. Bob's thy uncle. <laughs> oh, War Thunder. I have to admit, I do. This is the thing about history that I find the most amusing: is the ridiculous designs that historically people thought of. Like seriously, someone thought, "Hey, wouldn't it be amazing if you had a night fighter with cannons on the top?" How the hell does that work? <laughs> so yeah, um, very interesting design by the Germans, and I'm pretty sure someone will troll with it at some point. The next aircraft you get is... where is it? Ah, yes. The next new aircraft you get is... well, we'll go for this one first. The Germans beforehand, though, didn't have too much with regards to jet engines. Now, they do. Um, with this one being the MiG-15 BIS, which is basically just an East German equivalent to the MiG-15. Um, like I said, I have no real knowledge on what jet is what. All I know is that this one is a Soviet one. Uh, which was used during the Korean War and was the like the famous MiG which I believe also took part I'm not sure if it, this aircraft took part and also in Vietnam probably a latter version but still this aircraft was quite a famous aircraft and lasted for a fair long, fairly long time and it comes with a flashlight and a brake light as well that's pretty nice um, it is armed with one 37mm cannon and two 23mm cannons, so this thing is certainly deadly. So Germany now actually has access to a very decent aircraft. But that's not all for the German jets, no, no, no. Um, beforehand, be when you were flying the German jets, you'll have only had access to three jets. This one, this one, and this one, the MAC... ME2621A. Well, what, what Gaijin have done has also added another ME262C1A. Um, to all intents and purposes, this thing is, ver is no different apart from one thing. At least to my eye. Boom! That is a jet at the back of your plane. So it adds an extra amount of thrusting an extra amount of thrust and power to your aircraft, which means now that it can take part in more higher tier jet battles, which should be interesting considering that this design was late World War II and most other jet designs are post-war, early Korean War. So we'll see how th it's interesting to see how this fares, and plus also I do like this jet, one of the very few early jets that I have more knowledge of slash like. And, to fin and finally, the Germans get a very nice um, saber F86 saber, if I'm not mistaken. So this one has tw this one has six 50 cal machine guns and is the highest tier for Germany. Um, this one is basically given to the West Germans, as you can tell by the Bundeswehr marking, and it actually looked pretty sick with its camouflage, which I quite like. As you can see, modern German flag over there. So yeah, this is the this is the last and latest German aircraft for the tier, which is pretty cool because now. This means that you can go into combat um, and not feel, like, depressed when you lose one or two of your aircraft, realizing that now you've got the runt of the litter. You can actually use the runt of the litter first to make you people think, Haha, he doesn't, hasn't had much. Then you show them this, then this, and then this. Which is pretty cool. So Germany has now got an upgrade for jets. That's pretty nice. Now for Neparuski. And they've received a fair amount of airplanes as well, but most of them are lower tiered. First of all is this aircraft, the I-16 Type 24. Um, to all intensive purposes, it is just a slightly more upgraded version of the Type 18 I-16. Um, this one possibly has a little bit more maneuverability, possibly more, you know, possibly better firing rate. Uh, you know, it's just it looks different and it has, you know, and is slightly better than its counterpart. Um, it's still a little bastard, though. Um, yes, I have a bad history with these things. They are evil bastards. Very much fun to fly, a bastard to shoot down because they're so nimble. And if you thought that was a nightmare enough for all you haters of the I-16, they've actually added another one, the I-16 Type 27. Now, what's more devastating than an I-16? An I-16 with cannon. <laughs> yes, so this thing now has... They've, now, be, be happy, they've reduced the amount of machine guns that this things have, 
but they've also but they've replaced the machine guns with two Shivak um, 20 millimeter cannon. So this fast firing machine gun with these two 20 millimeter cannon, and if you are wondering, yes, this thing can also stack rockets. This is pretty much the anti-everything of lower tiers, though luckily its battle rating puts it at 3.7, so you may end up facing this thing when you have better aircraft yourself. Now, going down the list, Russia actually gets a um, couple of aircraft, um, well, we'll go into them in a minute, but what we'll do first is we'll get you to this new jet aircraft, um, which is this thing, the LA-15. Um, this one, instead of having a 37mm cannon, only has three 23mm cannon and a flashlight at the front. Um, and yeah, it's alright. I mean, it looks okay. Not as not as nice as the MiG-15. Um, it just looks like somebody decided to put a rocket and put wings on the side and said, there, perfect plane. Um, but yeah, so new Russian jet for the high tiers, which is pretty cool, I guess. Means you are completely out of fighters when you get shot down. Um, but there are two new aircraft, when I say new, um, that will not actually be here for much longer. At the time of this recording, which I believe is the 18th of April, you now only have... four days, roughly? No, three. My mistake. Three days would have been f four days from yesterday. Um, yeah, keep, I keep losing track of the days, it's stupid. Um, yes, you now have three days... three days the April the 21st to be exact, um, to get this aircraft, which is the LA-174. I am, unfortunately will not be able to receive it because I am just too far down the list and I am not willing to spend any money to get up this list, um, to get this aircraft, which is all intents and purposes is the same, maybe slightly more upgraded, um, with, a, with its own flashlight. And it looks slightly better with regards to the paint job than the previous aircraft. Um, so this, if you guys are currently grinding in Russia and you absolutely love your Russian jets, get this aircraft as soon as you can. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to see it for any more, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I don't know why Gaijin have done this, but they're doing it, so you better be onto it. So I'm just going to have a few more seconds to film this to say I had seen it. So there you go, and she's gone. Um, and also, this aircraft, the Spitfire Mark IX, is currently up for sale. Um, as well. But once again, like the other Spitfires, um, this thing will actually be gone. Unlike like the LA-174, um, this one will also be gone, as for some reason Gaijin have once again made it a temporary thing. It probably must be like the most ultimate of Spitfires. But so there you go. So, this aircraft, which will not be around for much longer, like I said, 21st of April, and the LA-174. LA so, yeah, um... Get, hard, get grinding, guys, because that won't be around much longer. So, Russia has received probably the most... What I would say is Russia has received the most aircraft um, for the lower tiers than any other nation. But at the same time, it's received a couple of decent new aircraft. Um, this one won't be around much longer, but still. Um, interesting um, additions to the Russian tech tree, indeed. Now, Britannia, what have you got that is new? Well, actually, you've got a couple of new um, Spitfires. Shock there. Um, but you've also got a new, um, a couple of new aircraft as well with that. Um, first of all, let's go to this one. Uh, the Avenger Mark I. Um, and it's pretty much the same as the American Avenger, which is an American Pacific Theater bomber. Uh, I also think, I'm not too sure if it's a dive bomber. I don't think it's a dive bomber. Um, torpedo launcher mainly, um, but you have the abilities to also drop 500 pound bombs. Um, and if you absolutely adore this in the American tech tree and you can't live without it at all, then feel free to know, so, you know, celebrate and get yourself a pot bottle of champagne because now it is part of the British Empire. So now you can take this into Britain, Br British battles, and earn glory for your name in this one with very odd markings. I know this is the Royal Navy markings, as you can see there. Um, but still, the Royal Navy have some very odd markings for their aircraft. But anyhow. So that's the new first new airplane you have. The second new airplane you have is this thing. Um, the Mosquito FB Mark uh, 18. Um, as you can see, my screen is so small, it actually moves the text. Um, now, for all you fans of the Mosquito out there, I mean, I'm kind of indifferent to this aircraft. 
you may be kind of disappointed with this aircraft to a small extent, um, because well, the first while the first um, Mosquito had like a crap ton of 20 mils and a few machine guns, this one actually has replaced its 20 millimeters with four um, Browning machine guns, 30 cal, which is kind of a bit odd. I'm not going to deny, but they have, however, replaced the cannons with something a little bigger. That thing under there, if you can see it, is a 57mm cannon. This is the largest cannon that Britain has fielded in its history, which means it beats the Typhoon or Tempest's 47mm cannon. But don't go, don't go spreading the sherry, because unfortunately this thing cannot be upgraded. Um, there is no way to upgrade the ammunition of this machine of this vehicle. Um, it only does armor piercing tracer shell. So most of the time, what will happen is you'll probably shoot at an enemy aircraft, and it will go straight through. Now, this might seem like a really bad thing, and you wouldn't be totally surprised. And I wouldn't be totally surprised if you felt this way. But I'm also thinking, considering that the world of ta sorry, tanks, that ground forces is not so far away, maybe this aircraft may come into its own if you're in a match against tanks. Because a 57mm gun at, like, some tiers, more than enough to probably penetrate and perhaps destroy um, an enemy tank from above. You never know. So, it potentially could be useful. It might not be useful at all. It might be a complete waste of time. But, you know, keeping the, op keeping the positive side there, now, on to the new aircraft, which I will call the Griffin series, because it says there as well. Um, the Spitfire Mark 22 and the Mark 24 are now our new aircraft. Now, say what you will about Spitfires, but these are ugly. Yeah, they are absolutely. This one is absolutely ugly in my eye. I mean, I know it's a Spitfire, and I know I'm probably going to piss off a lot of Spitfire people when I say this, but I do not like the up-to-date Spitfires um, for a number of reasons. First of all, um, the cannons look like someone just shoved them in incorrectly, and now the wings are now bulging, which is not a major crime, but I, you know, it's not a major crime. I'm willing to forgive that sort of thing, and it looks a bit weird on the bulges. It just looks a bit like someone's it's like this thing of Spitfire's grown some warts and it's not gotten rid of them. But the thing that is kind of a killer for me, and say we will, is the propeller. It is absolutely ghastly. It looks like a Spitfire and a P-51 got together one night, and this is their offspring. It's just ugly. And the colour is absolutely devastating. Now, I know historically speaking, doesn't matter, it's a fighter, and I'm certain that when I get this thing, it'll be proved to be very useful. But, it's still ugly as Christ. I'm sorry, Spitfire lovers. I prefer your early editions of Spitfire. Not this de mutated, inbred, dis bleh. It's just, oh, it's horrible. I don't like it. It's ugly. It's ugly. But anyway, um, the reason for this travesty of Spitfires is because this is the later version which has a different engine, which means that it will actually climb better um, to a degree, I believe. And it will go faster, but it will lose some of its maneuverability, uh, which is why it's a little heavier and all that. But still, latter version of a Spitfire, and one of the last few remaining versions of a Spitfire. So going back, and go to this one, the Mark 24, the last possible version of the Spitfire. Um, and here it is. I think I even saw a Mark 22 as well in real life when it came to the town. Anyway. I digress. Um, this one isn't as ugly because they've kept the horrible ugly yellow colour to just the propellers. So this one doesn't look as bad. Um, it's pr it's pretty much the same aircraft, only probably slightly more upgraded. Um, so yeah, this is certainly a nice looking aircraft. I do like the black line there as well. So, you know, aesthetically sp speaking, it's not bad, but, you know, not what I would call a nice aircraft. So, you know, there's, a there's now a two new um, Spitfires for you, which is not too bad. And the performance it will probably give you is certainly useful. Um, and it will probably give your opponents a good run for their money. Uh, with both of which being armed with 20mm Hispano cannons. So for Britain, um, it's not, you know, once again, more Spitfires. But, you know, if you have a thing for Spitfires, like I do, just not the modern ones, then feel free to 
or if you have a thing for the modern ones, then you will be happy to know that those are now in it, in the game, though the flight model may not be exactly accurate, just to warn you. And now, the Japanese. Um, the Japanese do receive en aircraft upgrades, which is nice, but it isn't much. Um, you do get one new zero, which is the AM, oh, wrong one, which is now the AM6211 mod, a mark, so mod 11 or mark 11. Um, yeah, I don't really know too much about the Zero. All I know is that this thing was absolutely deadly to most Allied fighters, and American fighters in particular, during the early phases of the war. But as with all Japanese aircraft, no armor, no chance. Um, and it, this one looks a bit like it went to the beach one day, and unfortunately, whatever it was wearing, it wasn't wearing enough on that side, so that got tanned. Um, so yeah, this is now an early version of the Zero Fighter, um, which allows you to have more Zero Fighters, which is not a bad thing. So that's pretty cool for that one. And the other one aircraft that you receive for Japan is this thing, the F-86F Sabre um, for the Jap japanese -ified. Um Once again, like Germany, it's pretty much the same as an F-86, which gives Japan a lot well gives Japan another option for the high tier games though in all fairness the Japanese haven't really received that much in particular um, but still it's really useful that the Japanese now get this aircraft as you know you need uh, it's very low on jet aircraft if we go to the tech tree once more you can see that it only has one uh, beforehand it only had one jet fighter which I wouldn't even call a jet fighter it just looks like a, a cruise missile with a uh, kamikaze inside it just it doesn't look good at all. So to have this thing now will certainly help the Japanese. Um, will certainly help the Japanese in higher tier games. At least it'll provide an extra thing for those who really want to fly jets and also want to rank up the Japanese. Though that said, by the time you reach to here, you probably upgraded everything else in your tech tree. So um, yeah. Uh, huh. Um, so yeah, new aircraft. Um, pretty cool. So the Japanese, although they've received the least, have certainly it's not great I'll, I'll admit, but it's something better. It's better than nothing. You know, it's not as bad. So, what else is new with patch 1.39? I won't ramble on too much longer but there are a few things which I would want to talk to you guys about um, one of which I'll probably do in a replay of a game because unfortunately now my War Thunder makes it so I can't actually play a game and play it live. Unfortunately, I'll have to play it, then go back to it. But anyway, um, one thing I did want to show you guys, though, was a whole new bunch of stuff, which is user creation, um, which is pretty cool. And more importantly, you can do it for your aircraft, um, which is pretty nice. So if you wanted to create your own kind of skin for the aircraft, you now can. Though, although I'm... In t although I like the concept of being able to come up with your own kind of stuff and to be able to deck out your aircraft, um, I am kind of worried about what gu the reason for Gaijin's decision to do this. Because, well, not to sound like an old fart, but what's the number one thing most children put on their stuff nowadays when you give them the chance? Like, take so for example, you go to the bu you go, you go, you get, you sit on the bus. And you're going to the town. What's the number one thing boys, for some reason in particular, like to draw on the side of them? I'm imagining that there are going to be a fair amount of profanities put on a bit on a on a BF 109, um, on a Bufighter. Fighter. Probably what they're going to do is they're probably going to put some kind of like dildo or dick on the front of uh, of a dive bomber underneath or whatever. You know, some some people will be artistically creative with these things, which is a good thing. But unfortunately, the majority of people who just want to be an asshole to history uh, will just insult and, and probably put some profanities on board. Though, though, hilariously, I reckon someone will probably put a swastika whereabouts here. Historically put a swastika there, which would be kind of hilarious. But yeah, so now Gaijin have allowed you to put your own kind of markings on the aircraft, and 
I haven't put too much research into this because I probably won't be doing anything of it. If you really do wish to find out loads of in-depth stuff, feel free to go check out um, another channel with regards to the user-created content. However, the other thing I will mention is the fact that you can also create your own missions. So if you are completely bored one day and your internet isn't good or you're so sick and tired of humanity i.e. the players on this game, that you want to make them pay, then by all means create your own mission, which mentally tortures the bastards to near suicide. Anyway, um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the in a replay of War Thunder, where I talk about um, a few of the other features which I really liked. So, we're back, and unfortunately with the replay system of War Thunder, it is kind of crap, so unfortunately you will see stuff as the ground units. But anyway, um, on to the subject at hand with regards to the new stuff. Um, so yeah, Gaijin have added a new thing as well to the way that you play the game um, now, which is actually quite nice. Um, a couple of things which have been put into place, first of which is the economy system. Now, a few patches ago, War Thunder was, in my opinion, a bit of a blissful place. I don't know why it's on called Quiet. Anyway, bit of a glitch on the replay system, not exactly the greatest. Um, so, basically, what War Thunder did beforehand was War Thunder had a very good economy system, which pretty much paid you crap tons of cash for not doing much. Um, and as such, um, it allowed you to um, not only... But it was just—it was quite a nice system, in my opinion, because it meant that you could progress relatively far and not have to worry about cash. But then a number, well then the wargaming decided to put in a patch, which reduced a lot of um, the well. It reduced a lot of the um, money that you received in said uh, in combat, which meant for non-premium players, progress in the game was reduced to a snail's pace. Um, however, now what Gaijin have done is they have actually increased how much money you get for getting either a kill um, or damaging aircraft and just generally made things a little, little bit, you get a little bit more of a reward for actually doing stuff in a game, which is pretty nice. Um, this encompassing with getting a, um, well, this encompassing with um, the fact that now the progress system in War Thunder has actually um, been reduced to a certain extent and they've actually lowered the amount of research points you need in order to get a um, new aircraft or to research modules and you know all of which have just made it so that you can enjoy um, researching the game or getting through the game at a faster rate they estimate that you can now travel you can now research at like what uh, 25 percent faster I believe or something like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I quite like that. It was a pretty decent-ish thing um, for that. Because now at least you can now kind of enjoy this game a little bit more um, rather than um, just, you know, trying to find a way of progressing through the game uh, than previously. And, you know, I, I, I do like this feature a lot. This is one of the strongest features for me in this patch. Because it basically means now I can actually enjoy um, playing this game without thinking, oh, for God's sake, you know, the team I had was absolutely crap, which meant that even though I killed, I don't know, five or six fighters, because we didn't win um, or whatever and got a daily double, I now have to trudge through desperately trying to find a way to, um, you know, do something useful. I was, I was just getting fed up with the fact that you just couldn't progress, which is kind of why I didn't play this game too often, and unfortunately... The, well, unfortunately, um, although the um, player base hasn't suddenly got amazingly better, at least um, the amount of money you earn in the game has become good enough that probably grinding through this game won't be a bitch. Now, another cool feature um, that they've done with regards to War Thunder, which isn't exactly too fussed upon my regard, but if you are the kind of person who enjoys playing with a group of people, or you are part of a clan, they have now implemented a squadron rating system slash squadron um, uh, battle system with regards to events. Um, so now, not only can you have the three events, the historic, you know, the arcade, the realistic, and the simulator, now you can have um, you can now have um, the rate you can also now have um, the 
squadron battles which have the same three difficulties. So if you are part of a squadron that does like to um, have like you know bits, you know his realistic battles or historic, you know feel real simulator and all that jazz, you can now do so, which is pretty darn cool. Um, I, I mean it's it's a cool system because if you ever became part of a group or whatever, you can now actually get better as a group rather than just forming up as a squadron then going into something else you know you know a little bit more it, it makes it a little bit better to be part of a group and all that and it's just something that Gaijin have done which is pretty nice I I like it when a company actually makes it easier for you to socialize with your friends and actually do stuff with it so yeah um that's pretty much all the list of the things I can think of at this time which are most evident to myself and others um anyway on to this replay so yeah, got a couple of good kills. Very close knit there. Um, this is when I was playing in the port map. And unfortunately, I'm not too good to do re replays, but I'll try and do the best commentary as possible. So in this game, it was kind of a bit of a close call with some of these things. Um, and our team, we, do, we were doing okay, but I think a few of us were kind of focusing a little bit more on being a fighter than on being a bomber. And unfortunately, a lot of our opponents and our teammates were crashing into each other at such ridiculous levels. It was taking the piss um, to a small extent, and yeah, it it gets frustrating because some some of the enemy players were being right scumbags and smashing into either the ground or smashing into each other to try and uh, avoid being killed. Which I really wish War Gaijin would kind of patch and say that if you kill yourself and you've been critted by someone, you should kind of take a punishment thing or like the kill still goes to um, either you're either your teammate that you've crashed into or you or he crashed into you you get a punishment system or something like that just so that way you don't just get away scot-free from actually giving your opponent the kill because that's a bit scummy you know I know people will always be scumbags but at least you know if you could find a way of down destroying that so anyway an enemy mark to Spitfire decides to have a go at me and I spot him at the last moment but unfortunately the P-39 N has no maneuverability. Oh, it's a Mark 1A. The P39 Mark 1A, the P39 has not got much in the sense of maneuverability. So I do try and keep this guy, try and keep this guy off my tail as much as possible, whilst also leading him away. And I believe, I, I think one of my allies was still on his tail, which was giving him a bit of a beans. No, my ally abandoned me. That's that's pretty nice. So I'm just trying to avoid. No, he is there. So I'm just trying to avoid his gunfire. And he, I was just being maneuverable as hell, trying to avoid getting killed or whatever. I swing around to the left, and this is quite quite a close moment there. So then I notice he's there, and I'm like, "Oh shit! Watch out!" Whoa! For some reason, he's getting his gear out, which is ridiculous. I shoot him, and I kill him. <laughs> I pilot snipe him, and he goes down in a blaze of glory. That was pretty darn cool. And then another Spitfire comes round to try and see if he can show off as well, which was pretty darn cool, but that kill there just made the, the, the whole game so much entertaining, and it was very satisfying. I love it when moments like that happen, where your opponent is either unfortunate enough or is that dumb enough to make a mistake which allows you to kill him in such a hilarious fashion, but well played to him regardless. So I try and go for this guy, and I do a nice shot into his tail. I critically damage him, and... He, oh, being careful, trying to get up, pull up high, and I get the kill, which is pretty nice. And I get very close to killing him as well. I kind of, I took, I was a bit cocky there and nearly rammed into him, unfortunately, but not intentional. So the game is pretty much coming up to a head, and it's getting quite dangerous. Um, now most of our vehicles and transports are being shot down, and um, the enemy team are desperately trying to blow up whatever things are left. So we're now kind of starting to find a real rear guard and defence. Unfortunately, this is what happens in most arcade games when the enemy bombers try and get close and go low enough. You get one, two, three, four, five enemy fighters on him, and everyone just gets all paranoid. So then I spot an enemy P-40, which was making his way towards going for our destroyer. So at this, I decide to cut him off at the pass and try and get him. Um, then we decide to do a head-on, and this is why you should never do a head-on <laughs> with a P-39N. Uh, he gets shot down with one shot, and I get another kill. Which is all nice. Yeah, that's why you should never do that. It was quite a close call. He could have rammed me. He could have ended up hitting me. 
Ah yes, this is when unfortunately, because at this point my entire aircraft unfortunately was completely kaputs. So I decided instead to make a withdrawal and get back to base to get back to base to try and see if we can do something about knocking out um, trying to see if we can knock out the enemy base or knock out anything there. And I miraculously slam my aircraft into the ground. Total professional, by the way. I, I, you know, and my, my aircraft just gives up afterwards. So I get out of the aircraft, and I think I chose to be a bomber, I believe. Not too sure what I wanted to choose. I, I think it was, I think I did chose to be a bomber. Or is that the game over? I can't remember. Because the game didn't last too much longer afterwards. Nope, it was this. So, aircraft bomber. And yeah, just as that happened, the game was over. So, um, yeah, I will see you guys back in the garage. So, there you have it. Patch 1.39. Um, we had a quick game inside. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the replay. I apologise for some of the bad parts of the replay. Like, you know, the bloody thing constantly flashing up or whatever. But unfortunately... The replay system in War Thunder is quite appalling. So, um, yes, the, with regards to um, the new patch, what do you think of it? Um, question of the video, you know, do you feel that the patch 1.39 has improved the game just enough to be able to play it? Or do you absolutely love this new patch, which, you know, means that you can play it for a long time now and become really good and get really far, even with a non-premium account? Or do you feel that it's just not really doing anything for you, that you miss the old days, that you just want, or you just want tanks, like myself, to be honest with you, um, and they should just get on with it. That said, though, the good news is, if you can see here, Kursk mode is now available, and if you are a closed beta tester for the tank ground forces, which unfortunately I am not, um, I am desperate, I'm on, 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 in all honesty, I am desperate. I cannot wait for these tanks to show up because it means that I can actually get away from this, which is not my favourite aspect of War Thunder in all essence. I do I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but the ground forces look so much more awesome. And as I am much historically more interested in tanks and groundwork, um I probably would find it more interesting to play this game that way. But still, if you are a plain person, do you feel this patch works for you? Or do you feel that this patch just does it's just another patch and you're not really that fussed anyway i hope you like this video guys um if you like this kind of content do feel free to let me know by typing in the comment section down below clicking on the like button and of course subscribing to the channel if you yourself are a youtuber slash war thunder player slash youtube war thunder player um and you've got any hints and tips for how better to either record this perhaps covering something better or being able to work around the replay system of the war thunder thing feel free to let me know i'm willing to learn how to record War Thunder better um, all the time. You know, I might have made mistakes here and there. We are human. So anyway, all I ask is that there is no trolling because it kind of defeats the purpose of the comment and it'll just be deleted. So yeah, the point is there. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. This is Crap Hunter signing out and I'll catch you next time.